Hello friends, welcome to my channel Creating Essence. I am Megan and I'm so glad you're here today. If you are new here, thank you so much for stopping by. We are a homeschooling, suburban homesteading family in Central Virginia and we love sharing our hearts on our YouTube channel here to encourage others and maybe share information that you haven't ha heard before that could be useful. Day, I am taking part in a really fantastic collaboration that was put together by Jay over at the Grateful Sunnites. I have been honored to know Jay for over a decade. She is such an incredible, hardworking mama who perseveres through so much, and it's an honor to know her. The topic of the collaboration is homesteading for health. What does that even mean? It means living this lifestyle of self sufficiency and living close to the land to get your health back or get it for the first time ever. It's no secret that we live a really sort of holistic lifestyle. We eat pretty healthy. We're really intentional about what we put in our bodies. We have a home that's as toxin free as possible. One thing I hear a whole lot though is whenever I mention our health problems, if you eat so healthy, why are you, so, why are you overweight? If you eat so healthy, why do you have autoimmune disease? If you guys eat so healthy, why is your kid sick all the time? All super valid questions. What people fail to think of is where we came from. What brought us here? Why are we eating so healthy? Are we so sick and broken because we eat super healthy and live super clean? Or are we living super clean because we were really, really sick? For us, that would be the latter, for sure. Neither my husband nor I were brought up really in a particularly healthy fashion. Nothing particularly terrible, but just pretty standard American lifestyle. He was raised in the cities and suburbs. I was raised on a dairy farm. But as far as diet and healthy approach to life, it was pretty much the same, the standard American 80s and 90s lifestyle. I've shared a little bit about our health struggles before. In uh, 2016, my husband got his first ever tick bite, and wouldn't you know, he got both Lyme disease and Rocky Mountain spotted fever from it. Uh, we took the immediate standard courses of action for treatment with the super heavy duty three weeks of antibiotics. Unfortunately, there is such a thing as chronic Lyme disease. There's the acute onset and then there's chronic, meaning it's in your body. You can't really get rid of it. For the most part, it lays dormant, but it flares up. From time to time, he will have gallbladder attacks. He has had his gallbladder checked out and they've said basically, it's fine, something inside you is causing random inflammation. He's developed food allergies since then and a lot of chronic health issues that can be directly tied to that tick bite, that heavy, heavy course of antibiotics. We are firm believers in antibiotics and all manner of Western medicine when it's truly appropriate. But our lives and what we've experienced have led us to believe that our bodies are made to work very well. And if we facilitate them in their natural ways of doing things, a lot of times they can do way more than we give them credit for. So that's really the approach that we try to take now. So he eats well, he avoids certain things, and he just tries to take really good care of his body to avoid those Lyme disease flare-ups. I've talked quite a bit about having autoimmune disease. While it may have come to a crisis point in 2017, I actually can look back and see the patterns of symptoms as early as 2010. I just was a mom with three small children, one of them with very, very debilitating special needs that controlled our whole family and I was doing what needed doing and there really was no time or energy for anything but survival mode. I will post a link to the video I did on chronic fatigue syndrome in the info box below in case you want to check that out in detail. I just talk about symptoms and my holistic approach and how I deal with things and sort of how things came on to the crisis point. But in general I found that eating a really clean diet 
with as little sugar as possible, really only natural sources like raw honey and maple syrup and things of that nature. Few preservatives and a whole lot of vegetables. It's how my body feels best. I have to listen to my body and sleep when it needs sleep. That has meant forsaking my 5 a.m. alarm that for years got me up to exercise and have my quiet time before the kids got up. My body also gets really depleted really quickly in the heat and I get heat exhaustion very easily if I don't listen to my body and get inside out of the sun well before that time. There's a whole lot more to it, but those are the major ways that my lifestyle has changed to try to help my body as I deal with having an autoimmune disorder. The health struggle that affects us the absolute most though would be our six-year-old son, Aaron. He was born in 2013. He was nine and a half pounds, 21 and a half inches long. Over the first couple weeks of his life, we realized he did have some seemingly minor things. By the time he was five weeks old though, um, he had been hospitalized. Well, he'd had his uh, one month shots a couple days prior, so he was sleeping constantly. We just had this feeling that we should have the baby in bed with us. So we put him between us and we fell asleep. And a couple of hours later, we both woke up with a start that we could not explain besides a higher power and looked at each other and then looked at the baby between us and he was gray. He was wide awake, his eyes were open, he was not crying, and he was not breathing. Uh, it took us quite a bit of slapping his back and trying to trigger those startle reflexes and different things to get him to breathe. And a really long story short, he did it multiple times that night and he stayed in the hospital for a few days and they called that Alta, acute life-threatening events. How the doctors in the PICU described it is that he basically had SIDS, but we caught him so he didn't die. And after four days in the hospital, they said, well, you know, your kid tried to die repeatedly and we don't know why, but he's stable now, so take him home. Over the next eight months, he had a lot of health issues. He had chronic ear infections and we realized very quickly he had a very delicate immune system and we saw all the specialists. When he was nine months old, we moved from upstate New York by Canada to Virginia where we are now. And that was kind of the turning point in how we approached things because every single thing we had done for Aaron had been a fail. The constant antibiotics for the ear infections did nothing. So someone mentioned a chiropractor. So we did a lot of research and finally just said, we have to do something different. So we took him to the chiropractor. He's never had another ear infection since. We found a new church here in Virginia. So I took him to the nursery one day because he was pretty loud in the service. And within a week, he had RSV and was in the hospital again on racemic epinephrine. It felt like every time we would go to church or the grocery store, he would be sick again. And he was on a nebulizer and all sorts of things. And I had been using things like homeopathy and essential oils very lightly for years. I wasn't totally sold, but I could see their merit for certain things. But after the RSV, I was researching and talking to doctors and talking to parents about um, how getting, you know, chemical cleaners and air fresheners th and things out of your home can help with the scarring in the airways that can trigger more issues. So we got rid of all those things and I learned how to make my cleaners and I learned how to make my laundry detergent. I started doing research on how to use essential oils for things much more effectively and safely and properly and truly doing the studies of the science behind essential oils and how they do what they do and why they do what they do and the literally the chemical constituents in essential oils that are the active 
active ingredients for lack of a better way of putting things. I have seen so many times people say, oh, those essential oils don't work. All those people on using essential oils are always so sick. They need to just take real medicine. Maybe they're using essential oils because real medicine has failed them so many times that they are desperate for something to work. So they tried essential oils and maybe they helped, but I'm not here to sell you essential oils. I don't sell anybody essential oils. I just use them. But all along the way, we were asking doctors, what, what is wrong? What is going on? Can we test for something? Can we look for something? And everybody just kind of brushed it off. Well, he's okay now. Well, we could put him on this other nebulizer Well, we could do this. I don't, I am totally okay with medication and Western medicine when it's appropriate. That is awesome. But I don't need a Band-Aid to cover up my kid's symptoms. I need to know what's wrong with his body. I need to know what's going on so we can help him. I don't just want to shut up his symptoms. And nobody really seemed to get that. They were like, well, he's not symptomatic right now, so he's okay. We did end up seeing an allergist because when he was 14 months old, he had an anaphylactic reaction to eggplant. I had known that he had some sensitivities. He didn't. When I ate chocolate and he was breastfeeding, he would get a horrible stomach ache. Um, things like applesauce would put little speckly hives on his face. Different things like that. I could tell he had sensitivities because I had kids before him with food allergies that they eventually outgrew. So I was, that was familiar territory for me. But when he broke out in anaphylaxis to his first little bite of eggplant the size of a pencil eraser going in his mouth, we won ourselves a trip to the allergist. We found out in addition to those sensitivities, he was allergic to nightshades and pork and turkey and chicken and eggs. All of those things explained so much, like his constant croup that the nebulizer was for. Well, we realized after his system was cleaned out, when he would have something cross-contaminated with chicken or turkey, he would get croup within 24 hours. He would have a clear runny nose and severe croup and eczema breaking out and bleeding rashes on his back. And the same with eggs. And when he'd have pork, he would have the screaming fits and the bloody diapers. So many things that we had been asking doctors saying, hey, this is not normal. This is not right for a child. Something is going on. And they'd say, oh, do you want a steroid cream for the eczema? Here's another, we'll try this nebulizer combination for the croup. So while the allergy, the food allergies definitely did not explain everything our son was dealing with, they explained a lot. And they really affirmed in our hearts that we needed to listen to our guts we needed to be our son's advocate. We needed to push to get him the care that he needed. And we needed to listen to his body and what it was telling us. So we started eating a really clean diet. We cut out preservatives and dyes and refined sugars and all of his allergens. And I was making our bread from scratch. I was getting the wheat berries and grinding the grain to make our flour so we weren't dealing with any of the bleaching or the synthetic B vitamins that they supplement things with. I was reading labels like crazy, but really barely buying anything that was prepackaged and his health improved so much. It still was not normal, but it improved, but he got sick so easily. The slightest virus would put him in the hospital. And it came to the point where even now, and he's six years old, we rarely leave the house between October and April because to everyone else, Sickness is a part of childhood. So they care far less. Oh, he's fine, send him to school. Oh, he's fine, send him to Sunday school. Oh, he's fine, let's go to church. Oh, he's fine, let's go to Mops and put him in the nursery. All the things that are totally normal that spreading these illnesses because 
pe it's far more inconvenient for people to stay home and miss their social activities or stay home and let their bodies rest, which is the absolute norm in today's society. Those common choices were threatening our son's life. The big picture of everything really led us to homesteading because we can grow our own food, we can produce things ourselves, we have the clean air, the less exposure to germs and chemicals, the water, the well water that doesn't have fluoride in it, and we really can take our own approach to life. We have our own pace. My husband's health needs are met. My health needs are met. We do our very best to get our son's needs met. And of course we have all the rest of our children here and they are the better for it. Our one reason I love sharing on YouTube is that our day to day doesn't really look like most people's day to day. Our grocery hauls look different. Our meals look different. We homeschool. Our approach to health looks different. Our daily schedule looks different. We don't really leave the house October through April because of the rampant illnesses during the winter when everything's so closed up and in close quarters. And we are so grateful that we have this lifestyle of homesteading, of self-sufficiency that can accommodate these needs. A huge part of our self-sufficiency is having the freedom to do what we need for our health and our family. We aren't on anyone else's schedule or anyone else's clock. Homesteading gives us the freedom to live how we need to, to be healthy. And yeah, it's a lot of work. And yeah, it is so much that is not super typical, but that's exactly what we need for all sorts of reasons to be healthy. So homesteading did not make us sick. Healthy eating did not make us sick. Essential oils did not make us sick. But we are here doing all of these things because we're trying to live. We're trying to heal. And that's really what we talk about here. We share a life because we have been told it's so unique. It's so encouraging. It's so interesting. It's so fascinating. Whatever it is, we are grateful to have you along and share our journeys and share our lives. So thank you for being here. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, always put them in the comment section below. We love hearing them and we try to respond to every single one. We would love to have you subscribe and hang out with us more. Thank you so much, friends. Bye-bye.